I've started doing some research on missing men in eastern Kentucky, and I've actually come across quite a few missing men across the entire state of Kentucky. So because some of these cases have so little information to go on, some of these people have been missing for many years and others are more recent. The, the more recent ones, you tend to find a little bit more information about them. So I decided I'm just going to put together a group, a video of a group of, of these people because um, there's, while they do deserve their own story and their own video, um, there's so little to, to go on. I just didn't want to create these little short clip videos. So I'm just going to go through this list and give what information I can find. And I usually try to do a follow-up on these to see if there's been any um, updated information about if they have been found or not. I think some of these websites will post that. But this is from the um, website Uncovered. This man's name is Ronald Baldwin. He was last seen June the 12th, 2004 in Bonneville, Kentucky. He was 54 years old at the time that he went missing. He would be 67 today. He is a Caucasian male with graying white hair and um, he weighed 230 pounds and it does not have a height. So I'm going to read this. It's from Unsolved Appalachia. This gives a little bit more detail. On Saturday, June the 12th, 2004, 54-year-old Ronald Baldwin, along with a 12-year-old neighbor, went four-wheel riding on a 300-acre farm on Buckner Hill Road in Bonneville, Kentucky. At some point along the ride, the 12-year-old neighbor returned to the house to refuel his a four-wheeler, but was unable to find his way back to where he had last seen Ronald. It wasn't unusual for Ronald to spend hours out in the forest on his property. He was an avid outdoorsman, and riding his ATV was one of his favorite things to do. However, Ronald's girlfriend reported him missing the following day when he had not returned home by late evening. The Sheriff's Office, Emergency Management, and Rescue Squad began searching for him immediately. They reconvened Monday afternoon and searched well into the darkness. Um, authorities and crews searched all as much of the 300 acres of Ronald's farm as well as surrounding properties. Ronald's ATV was eventually found abandoned by one of his neighbors, along with his prescription glasses, his shoes, an unfinished bottle of whiskey. Nothing I read suggested that there were signs of a struggle, blood, or anything like that. No sign of Ronald has ever been found. Um, and this is really all there is to this story. Um, he had white hair, brown eyes. He was five foot nine and weighed around 230 pounds. If you have any information, please contact the Hart County Sheriff's Office at 270-524-2341. The next case is William Adams III. He was last seen March the 12th, 2017. Before I finish, let me just say, um, my dog is really getting in on the show today. She's giving her input. I apologize, but, you know, she likes to contribute. So, William Adams the third. He was last seen March the 12th, 2017 in Henderson, Kentucky. Um, he was a white male. He was 16 at the time that he went missing. He was around five foot 
three inches tall, 140 pounds, with brown hair. I don't seem to be finding very much at all about this young man, which is sad. This is what I was talking about. This is one of the reasons why that I made these videos and just kind of lumped them all together because finding anything about some of these are next to impossible to um, get any information about. You know, where, where was he last seen and by who? You know, William Bruce Adams III, Henderson County, Kentucky. Little. He, that, that's it. There's really nothing else. There, it does not go into any detail about him. I will continue to look and see if there's, you know, any, anything I can find about him. But this is just very sad, really. You know, that this is the way that it is. There's just some of these people. Some cases get more attention than others. I'm just going down through this line um, on, it's all Kentucky code cases. Cecil Baker, last seen May the 1st, 2011 in Barberville, Kentucky. He was last seen, he told family he was going to Michigan to pick up his 14-year-old daughter and no one has seen him since. No one is even sure if he made it out of the state. He was 47 at the time that he disappeared. He was white, uh, six foot tall, weighed 185 pounds with sandy brown hair. Let me see if I can find out anything else about him. He was from Knox County, Kentucky. Um, here is a little bit more on the Mountain Advocate. On May the 1st, 2011, a Knox County man left his home in Barberville, Kentucky around 5 p.m. telling family he was heading to Michigan to pick up his 14-year-old daughter. Cecil O. Baker left Knox County in a green 1994 Geo Metro hatchback. He stood around six foot tall and weighed 180 pounds. He wore prescription glasses with a thick black frame. The day he left, he was wearing khakis, khaki pants, and a brown and white striped polo shirt. On his right ins inside forearm, he has a heart tattoo that says Tammy and another tattoo of a bird. Baker had recently cut his hair and shaved, but he had been known to wear his hair long and like a goatee type of beard. But at the time that he disappeared, he had just cut his hair. May the 6th, 2017 was the last time a Facebook page following the Baker case was updated. On May the 1st of that year, WYMT ran a story about his disappearance. There have been little to no leads in his disappearance. In March of 2015, a body found in Whitley County was thought to be Baker, but it was not. There's a $10,000 reward offered for information. If you have any information, please contact Kentucky State Police Please contact Kentucky State Police Post 10 at 606 573 There's There's little coverage about men. Not as much as women and children get. And the reason that I think that is is because we assume that men can take care of themselves, that they probably haven't been abducted. That's, that's a theory. But it's not always true, as we've seen in a lot of serial killers target men. And um, so the next one is James Boggs. He was last seen March the tw uh, 2nd, 1987. 
James Boggs went to the Imperial Club in the Vico area of Perry County. The last time he was seen, he was walking along the roadway. Um, he was 30 years old at the time that he went missing. He was 5'9", 250 pounds. He had brown hair, and he was a Caucasian male. He would be 66 years old today. He was born March the 22nd, 1956. He was wearing a black t-shirt, blue jeans, and brown western style boots. He wears a beard and he has a tattoo of an airplane on his left shoulder. The day he got into an altercation at the Imperial Club and he was asked to leave. He was seen walking down the roadway, and he has never been seen since. Well, I would ask the question, who did he get into an altercation with, and what was it over? Was it just a little, you know, bar argument, or was it a full-on fight? Um, was he asked to leave by the, you know, did anyone else also leave at the same time? Did someone else, um, the person he'd got into an altercation with, did they also leave? The next one is Wynant Hemi Moore, W-Y-N-A-N-T. He was last seen, let's see, on the weekend of June the 2nd, 1974, 29-year-old Hemi Moore was dropped off the Mill Creek area of the Natural Parks, Natural Bridge State Park in Slade, Kentucky, by his fiance. He was looking forward to a weekend of camping, fishing, and wanted to disconnect from life of Lexington, Kentucky. On Sunday, Ruth came back to the area to pick him up at their designated spot that they had agreed on, but he was nowhere to be seen. After waiting for some time, she reported him missing to park officials and police. Once his, in, his disappearance became public knowledge, two fishermen approached law enforcement about some items that they had found in the Mill Creek area at around 2.30 that Sunday. They found a wallet, clothing, shoes, and a wrist brace that were identified as having belonged to Hemi. However, he had two blankets and a black zippered bag that were not recovered. A large search was conducted. There were multiple bloodhounds as well as several local agencies and park services, but nothing was ever found. To this day, there has been no sign of Hemi. What possibly could have happened to him? What happened to his other belongings? If he had taken his wallet, shoes, and clothing off. Is it possible that he went into the water to swim, maybe? And didn't want to get his shoes and things wet? Um, for all of you who are familiar with the Natural Bridge State Park, Mill Creek is a whole two minutes from Miguel's Pizza. So whenever you're in the area, think of him and pay your respects if you would. But keep an eye out for him. I'm sure his family would appreciate knowing that he was not forgotten. I'm going to move on down to the next one. Stephen Bunch. Stephen Bunch was... Last seen December the 28th, 1985, in Covington, Kentucky. Stephen worked at and owned Bunch's Auto Body. He has not contacted family members, nor has he been seen. He was 5 foot 7 and weighed around 180 pounds. He was a white male with brown hair. He was 26 years old at the time of his disappearance. Um, his hair was collar length, and his mother said that he had been having hair replacements as he was starting to go bald. Um, he had no facial hair. He had blue eyes and a scar 
on his right cheek. He was muscular build with a light complexion. The last known clothing that he was known to have on was a long white overcoat, a light blue sports coat, and dark blue long sleeve shirt and dark blue trousers with white shoes. Bunch left his hometown of Covington, Kentucky on December the 28th, 1985 and went to a January, went to January's, a nightclub in Cincinnati, Ohio. He stayed at the club until 2 a.m. and drank beer. When he tried to leave, his, he discovered his car battery was dead. It was a rental car and a friend had taken his own vehicle without permission and wrecked Bunch got a ride home with a female friend. She seemed, she said he seemed anxious and kept glancing behind him because a police car was following them. He didn't calm down until the police car turned off in a different direction. Bunch's friend said she dropped him off at his parents' home on Warren Street in Covington. His parents were still awake when he came inside. He went into his room and stayed about five minutes and then he told his mother he was going out for a while and that someone was coming to pick him up. Bunch's father thought he was behaving oddly so he, follow, he followed his son outside and saw him go into the backyard. He was never seen or heard from again. His family searched the wooded area near their home. They found the scarf that he had been wearing that night. His rental car, which had been left parked in the parking lot, later turned up several blocks away from the club. He went missing shortly after testifying in a criminal case, and there were rumors that he went into a witness protection program, but this was never confirmed. His case remains unsolved. Well, if he was paranoid because the police were following him and um, was the case that he testified in something to do with the police, you know, that would have scared him. Moorhead, Kentucky, November the 23rd, 1991, was the last time that David Brown was seen at the Christian Community Center. He was 23 at the time. He was a white male, 145 pounds, height 5 foot 8. He had strawberry blonde hair, and he wore glasses. David Allen Brown was last seen November the 23rd, 1991 in Moorhead in Rowan County, Kentucky. 24 years old, white male, 5'8", 145 pounds, with strawberry blonde hair and blue eyes. Um, he was last seen wearing a light jacket, jeans, and tennis shoes. The Christian Community Center, I think, is probably something like people maybe would go to to get meals or, you know, help. I, I did a story about a woman who was unidentified. She lived in the Moorhead area. She was known as the Bridge Lady, and she was known to go there quite a bit. They They were familiar with her but nobody knew who she really was. Um, so the only information about this young man is one report has him being last seen at the Christian Community Center, yet someone else claims to have seen him 40 miles away in Lewis County. William Hamilton. William Edward Hamilton, known as Bill. He was six foot tall, 165 pounds, 41 years old at the time. He was a black male with black hair and black eyes. He walks with a limp and carries his right arm to the side. He has a tattoo, but it is unknown what it is. 
He was last seen wearing tan paints, a blue sip-up jacket, with a brown leather belt with a brass belt buckle. He was wearing a long sleeve blue shirt that had been splattered with white paint. He wore a brown rim, uh, a brown wide brim hat, and he had on brown lace up slippers. He was last seen leaving a residence in Mount Sterling, Kentucky on September the 24th, 1980. He did not drive as he did not have a driver's license or own a vehicle. He was reported missing October the 5th of 1980. There is very little information regarding his disappearance. If you have any information about him, please contact the Kentucky State Police at 606-784-4127. Thoughts about him. It's it's sad. It's like I say, there's some of these cases that are older cases, and they just kind of fall in between the cracks, you know? Some you find some interesting information about, and others you just don't. But I will come back. Josiah Caskey, Lexington, Kentucky, last seen August the 4th, 2014. He was 31 at the time. He was six foot two and weighed 170 pounds. He was a white male. Um, here is something from um, Lost But Not Forgotten. Let's see. There's very little. Some of these cases like this are cold cases, and the information has not been put out there for whatever reason. You know, whatever the reason is, um, their cases have just kind of fallen. And, and this is all there is about this man. He was last seen August the 4th of 2014 from Fayette County, Lexington, Kentucky. No more information is given. Very sad. Very sad because he's somebody's kid. He's somebody's brother. Sometimes when I start doing research on a story, um, I find very little detail to go on. And so I decided to put a few videos together into one because there's little to go on. And I didn't, while these people deserve their stories to be told and they deserve their own video, it's hard to find information on them, so I just did the best that I could. Michael Keith Allen of Langley, Kentucky, was last seen May 30th, 2001. He was 25 years old at the time that he went missing. He was 6 foot 8 inches tall and weighed around 250 pounds. Um, he was at his residence and he got into a red pickup truck with an unknown subject. He had brown hair and possibly had facial hair, a small uh, light beard, brown hair, brown eyes. He has a square scar on the bottom of his foot and a cleft chin. He has a wolf tattoo on his right shoulder. Michael Keith Allen, 26, was last seen May 30th, 2001 in his re at his residence in Langley, Kentucky in Floyd County. Witnesses say that he got into a red pickup truck with someone that they did not know. That was the last time he was ever seen. It doesn't say if it was a male or female or if they even saw the driver. This is another case with literally no information. Rumors and accusations were listed on topics, but they were all just hearsay. No one knew who was driving the red pickup truck. Um, was Michael privy to some information that no one else was supposed to know about? Uh, nobody really knows if his family said anything about what he might, where he may have been going or if anyone even knew about where he might be going. Um, 
they haven't come forward with anything. Or if they have, you know, they may have shared information with the police, but it hasn't been shared here. When I put this video together, I hated that there was little to almost no information on a couple of these people. And I just included the ones that I actually could find some information about, but there's some that give you nothing more than a name and the date that they went missing, and there's almost nothing else. I'm going to continue to go through this list of names because it is vast, but I'm going to try to find some more that are more local to the eastern part of the state. But I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and I hope that you will come back and watch the rest. Thank you.